Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to introduce probability distribution tables. Okay, in order, I, I think the best way to introduce these tables is to do a simple experiment. And for us, we're going to flip a coin, and we're just going to flip a coin once. So flip a coin once. Okay, so when you flip a coin, and I'm sure we've all done that, we, we know that there are two outcomes. Okay, so our sample space, we're going to get heads or tails. Okay, and we also know that the chances of getting heads or tails are equally the same, so both of them have uh, the probability of one half. So probability of heads, one half. Probability of tails, one half. Now what a probability distribution table is, is it is a table that lists the outcomes on the left hand side, heads or tails, and then the probabilities on the right hand side. And that's it. That's a probability distribution table. You have your outcomes on the left, the probabilities on the right. Now two things about probability distributions. On the left hand side, your outcomes, they have to exhaust all possibility, so exhaust all possibilities. What that means is that it has to include every possible outcome that you're looking at. So if we're talking about flipping a coin, heads or tails, you can't just ignore tails and have an out you know, just write heads. I mean, you, you have to make sure that you include all of them. And then your probabilities over here, they have to add up to one, which one half plus one half does adds up to one. All right, so let's take this example of flipping a coin and let's extend it. Let's flip a coin three times. Now, in order to figure out what the sample space is for flipping a coin three times, it's best done using a tree diagram. In order to create the sample space, what you're going to do is you're going to follow the branches from start. So we're going to start here and follow them to the end. And as you finish, you write down every letter you pass, and that's going to be your uh, sample point. So if you go up the first branch, first branch, and then up this first branch here, you're going to get heads, heads, heads. If you go up first branch, go up this branch here, the second branch for heads, and then go down tails, you'll get heads, heads, tails. So that's flipping a coin, first coin heads, second coin heads, third coin tails. If you keep this process going, you'll get the following sample points. So we have a total of eight of these. So we have a total of eight. Okay. And so if these are our sample points, we can create a probability distribution. It's going to look like this. You can see that all the probabilities are one eighth, and that's because each one of these outcomes is equally likely to happen. And here are eight possibilities. So I exhaust all possibilities, meaning I'm not missing one. And if you were to add up all of these right here, one eighth plus one eighth all the way up to the, the bottom, or all the way down to the bottom, uh, it does add up to one. So this is a true probability distribution. So let's change the example a little bit. Let's find the probability distribution for the number of heads when a coin is flipped three times. So our sample space, which I'll write down here. Okay, what are the outcomes when I flip a coin three times? Well, I can get zero heads, I can get one head, I can get two heads, or I can get all three heads. And you can see that from up here, here's an example of three heads, here's one with two heads, here's one here with no heads. What's nice is I can use this probability distribution I have right here uh, to help me create the probability distribution to answer this question, which is the number of heads when I flip a coin three times. So let's start by bringing out a probability distribution with the outcomes I've listed here. Okay, so now that I have my outcomes on the left-hand side of this table, I can then write in their associated probabilities on the right. So this is my sample space I have up here of flipping a coin three times. Let's look at the probability of when I get no heads. So that's what I'm looking at right now is no heads. 
So let's see, we have no heads right here. Okay, so then let's write in that probability. So no heads, probability would be 1 8. Okay, let's find the probability where you have one head. Now where do we get one head? We get one right here. That's one, two, and then up here is three. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add up the probabilities of each of these uh, simple outcomes. So it would be one eighth plus one-eighth plus one-eighth for a total of three-eighths. So the probability of getting one head is three-eighths. Now the probability of getting two heads, so where's that at? So we got one right here, two heads, right here, and right here. So again, we're ha we get two heads three times, so you're going to add one-eighth three times, so that again is 3 eighths. And then finally, how m what's the probability of getting three heads? Well, that only happens once. And you can see that uh, way up at the top here, it happens once. So we'll add in the probability 1 eighth. If I clean up the probability distri distribution table a little bit, it's going to look like, like this. And let's see, does it exhaust all possibilities? Yep, because out of th when you flip a coin three times, these are the only outcomes you can get for the number of heads. And if you add up these four probabilities here, so one eighth, three eighths, three eighths, and one eighth, you add this up, you'll get eight eighths, which is one.